How you doing there guys? This is Job Wise Jones coming right back at you. So I am behind in my emails. I am entering March emails. Now, so the question I've given, I get this a lot and I have to answer it today. So the question was from Amy in Wisconsin. Job Wise, why do I have to do an externship? I don't even get paid. Ah, that's a pretty good complaint, right? Why does she have to do a medical assistant externship because she doesn't get paid? Well, the rules are the rules there for externships as far as not being paid. But let's get into why you have to do the externship. And really, Amy, you want to do the externship. And I'll give you five reasons why, okay? So today, let's get right into it. The first thing is this. You're going to obtain a skill set that is different from your school because what your school taught you, remember from a few videos before, maybe from last year, the schools give you the basic. They give you the skills needed to walk into the door, right? So the skills open that door, right? Your, your CCMA, your, your externship being completed, you got through the interview, right? So the skill sets you are learning on the job are completely different from the job. Yeah, phlebotomy is different from the, from the when you do phlebotomy, right, it's the same from the school as it is on the job. But you will learn different techniques, how to do things differently, maybe get a more up-to-date understanding of phlebotomy in an actual externship clinical practice with real patients, right? It also, things like EKG, getting into the EPIC system, the usually used computerized system for medical charging and so on, it's called Epic. It's used in a lot of hospitals, maybe not the one you are at, but in a lot of places, including clinics, Epic is used. So that's the first thing is you want to acquire a skill set you can only get from the externship, right? Because no one is going to pay you until you get your externship completed, right? So that's the first thing you want to do. Number two is this, and this is really important. It's networking. The best MAs out there, the smartest ones out there are the ones who are constantly networking. Even if you go to an externship, right, and you are like a superstar there, and then you say, well, are there any jobs here? And the HR department says, no, there aren't any jobs here. But if you've been networking, talking to the MA to the right of you, to the left of you, the nurse to the right of you, to the left of you, even the doctor or whoever, right? You can always ask them, hey, do you know who's hiring? Hey, do you know what's coming down the line for medical assistance? Networking helps out a lot. Also too, right, if you know the nurse manager or the MA manager there at the externship site, write down that name. Make sure they know who you are from your good work. <laughs> the reason why I say from your good work because Sometimes you have a medical assistant who doesn't do good work and they know who that person is because of a poor reputation, right? You do not want to be that medical assistant with a poor reputation. Be the one who's always on time, who does things right, who's always asking questions, who jumps in there, who's positive, who's always there whenever they are supposed to be there, right? You treat that externship like you're getting paid. From that, you build your reputation at the externship. It's really an awesome way to do that because then people will say, you know what? We don't have a job here today, but so-and-so across the street, they have an opening, this I know, and I will be your reference, right? That's how you do your networking. But you can only get good networking if you are a good medical assistant worker, correct? No one's going to put their name down for you to support you if you're late every day bringing personal problems to work, wearing a lot of cologne or perfume, really long nails, crazy looking, everything, you know? You have to be a professional. You have to treat that job, even though it's an externship and you are not being paid, like you are being paid because that networking will go miles for you. I have people today who still ask me, hey, job-wise, will you be a reference? I think that, oh, that she was a superstar. Yes, I'm going to be her reference, right? 
And I've also had people where I cannot be their reference because I'm not gonna put my name on the line for someone who came in of the past 30 days for their externship, they only made it for 14 days on time. I can't support that, so I'm not gonna do that. So that goes with the clinic you're at too. Be that superstar there, right? Another thing too, you get a real understanding of the job. The schools can <clears throat> only do so much. And we don't wanna fault the schools and say, oh, they didn't teach me everything. They're not supposed to teach you everything. <laughs> Whether you get a certificate or a bachelor's degree like I have or a master's degree like I have, they give you the basics. They give you the foundation of that house. The rest of the house is built by your experience you learn on the job. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm saying is that the foundation comes from the schools, right? And once you get into that job or the, ex the job, right? So you're building here, that's your phlebotomy. You're building here, that's your EKG. You're building here, that's your patient care. You're building your house from the experience you're learning on the job, correct? So that's important, all right? Another thing too you wanna get a think about is also is that you have to think about these skills you are obtaining on the job. They will go where? Onto your resume, right? So you're saying, oh, well, most people who hire medical assistants already require an externship. Yes, they do. But if you know how to properly word your resume so that it shows a lot of skill sets you learn at your externship, it will reflect positively for you at, at, the, at, at, the, uh, at the interview process, correct? It's going to look strong. And again, that is something you probably want to ask the HR department while you're there, on your externship, you can do this. People don't understand these things, but yes, you can do this. You can ask the HR, hey, I'm on externship. Do you have any advice on how I can beef up this resume? I know it's not a guarantee from you, but do you have any advice? And believe me, a real world HR department is going to have a plethora of good information for you versus what your school gave you, correct? Your school is just going to give you the basics because they have a high volume of medical assistance. So typically, those resumes all look alike, just a different name, all the same. But an HR department and where you're doing your externship will give you specific help, right, or advice or hints for your resume depending on what you gathered on that job. You understand? So they can really help you. So your resume then your beefed up resume will look beautiful when you go for an interview you can even beat out experienced medical assistants maybe six or seven years on the, on the job because your resume will reflect current modern techniques that people are using these days in the medical assistant field at the very least it'll make sure that even if you don't get that job against a more experienced medical assistant they will hold your resume for up to 180 days, right? I know it's a long time, I get it, but I'm saying that's one place that will hold your resume for you, you know, and that's important. The last thing I wanna to say to you, Amy, is that an externship is important because it gives you the chance to really understand the deep responsibility of a medical assistant. <clears throat> When I was in MA school, and I see it now, there's a lot of fun times and laughing and having a great time. That's fine. It should be that way for school. School should not be every day 100% serious. It should be some light times for sure. But when you become a medical assistant, you're going to understand in the externship how serious that job is, right? Because every test you do, every blood test you draw, every EKG you do, every patient you call back, every time you gotta call the pharmacy, every time you gotta call someone with an insurance issue, every patient you talk to who might have a problem with you, every time you interact with one of your colleagues, that gives you real world experience, things no school could possibly prepare you for. You are getting what we call direct immersion into the career field. And that is important, important. I think that the externships, although unpaid, are a necessary part of becoming a medical assistant because 
you're just not ready coming from school into the job directly. There's no way you can possibly be prepared for that. And I'm sorry, Amy, I know it's not paid. I, I get that part. But the reason why they do that is really a favor to you. It really is. It's going to help assure your success as a medical assistant. You are going to have more struggles, of course, because you have to work for free. So you have to have somebody who's supporting you or you work at night like I did. I work at night. So, you know, those are the realities, the, the hardships of the externship. But <clears throat> the value of the externship cannot possibly be valued because it's such an important part of the overall package of becoming a medical assistant. You know, you guys, you guys know Job Wise Jones, I never lead you guys astray. I'm always rooting for you. It's why I do so many videos that are medical assistant focused because I believe in the profession and I believe the more I talk about it, the more I represent the profession, the more I help out the profession, the more stronger overall the profession becomes, right? I think medical assistants are evolving for the better. That's how I see it. So Amy, thank you for your question a few months ago. That is the answer, and I hope that answer helps out the rest of you. You guys, thank you for all my subscribers. I'm so glad you're not just looking at the video and walking away. I'm glad you joined this family. Thank you very much, and I love the questions. I'm a little bit behind on the questions. Sorry about that. I still got to work a 10 to 11 hour day, and I have a beautiful wife I deal with at home, so I, I get my videos out as much as I can, three or four, sometimes five times a week. I try very hard to make sure I keep my MAs up to date, okay? You guys, to have your subscriptions like you are and to, and to go to my videos and to like them, it's just humbling for me. It's very humbling. And so I want to sincerely thank you for that. All right, I hope I answered your question and you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.